Hello everyone, in this lesson we will focus on how to use Adobe's built-in authentication and authorization system. First, we'll look at how it works, then we'll go over how to set it up and use it. This service, called the AIO Management API, is used to secure our apps. The older version used JWT tokens, but it has recently been updated to use OAuth. All the important details are on the security overview page, so if you want to learn more, feel free to check it out, but don't worry, I'll be simplifying the process for you here. So, as you can see, there is a lot of information on this page. So, what is important for us? Uh, let's scroll down to the authentication and authorization handling section. So, here, every app builder application gets integrated to an out-of-the-box authentication and authorization handling layer. Whether the application is headless or a single page application, this extra security layer will check that. Firstly, there is a bearer token passed as an authorization header for, uh, of the calling request, so it will check if we have, um, yeah, if there is this token, of course, and then this token is validated against Adobe IMS system for authentication, and then this token is validated successfully against Adobe Exchange for authorization, right? So we have two systems, Adobe IMS and Adobe Exchange. So Adobe IMS is for authentication, Adobe Exchange in short is for authorization, and here we can see that Adobe Exchange is the distribution platform for our builder applications. It will authorize a token if and only if. So the backend action, right, that we invoked belongs to the enterprise organization for, of course, for the token that was like sent into the request. So this was the first action that is done by Adobe Exchange, and then the token is authorized to use Adobe product APIs, which are integrated to this app builder application. So those are the responsibilities of those IMS and exchange systems. And here we have a simple diagram. So for example, we have Adobe product or third party system service, which invokes some runtime action and we send authorization bearer access token and also organization ID in a header. So this is sent. And then the runtime action, there is a chain of validators. So there is a validator for authentication and authorization. So it will check if we have access to this specific runtime action. If we do not have, there will be a failure with a 400 code. If it's all okay, then the custom action will be executed. So even though each app builder is by default integrated with the security layer, we can control this behavior by changing the require Adobe auth field in the app config yam file. So if you create an action by AIO app init or um, at action, it will create this config with the require Adobe auth set to true. So this is by default. So we can of course modify it and set it to false, but it is actually not recommended because we always want to have a security in our application. And upon deployment, so once we use the AIO app deploy, um, there will be some manifests created dynamically and you could see, for example, here in this documentation that this action will be rewritten. So there will be a sequence of actions. So firstly, we will have this shared validator and then there will be our runtime action. So it means that if we set this require Adobe auth to true, there will be a validator responsible for the whole authentication and authorization. Uh, process. Let's take a look now at this process in a more visual way. So before sending any request, we first need to request a fresh access token from Adobe IMS. And this token is then stored by the client and used in each request sent to our action. Now, imagine we are sending a request to an app action. Since Adobe has configured a chain of actions, the request first goes through the validator action which retrieves the token from the authorization header, and then the validator sends the token to the authentication and authorization service, which connects directly to Adobe IMS to generate a service token, and then it sends this token to Adobe Exchange to confirm that the token has the right permissions. If everything checks out, Adobe Exchange sends back a 200 status code if not, it may return a 401 or 403 error, which is then sent back to the validation action. 
If there is an error, the execution stops and the client receives an error message. But if the request passes the validation, it's sent to the action we wanted to access. All right, let's see it in action. Let's go to our application in the developer console and switch to the stage environment. And now we can add a new service. So we can do it by clicking add service here, selecting API and then choosing AIO management API, clicking next and then selecting OAuth server to server. Previously, there was also an option to use the uh, JWT token, but right now yeah, there is no option to do it. So uh, then we click Save Configured API. So this is the way on how to do it from the developer console. But also if we get back to our terminal, uh, we can do it by simply running the AIO app at service command. So here we can, yeah, we can try to run it now, run, run it. We can click add new services and uh, we can, okay, you can, we can actually see that AIO management API is already installed, so we cannot add it here. But uh, usually uh, if you do not have this uh, selected and installed into the specific workspace, you should see this service here and you can just also install it from the AIO CLI. But yeah, we can just close it. We are not interested in running any of those services at the moment. Let's get back to our developer console and we can see here that in this stage workspace, right, we have the AIO management API and we have the API here with some API key client, we can generate access token and so on. And also we have a credentials. So there is the whole out server to server with some other credentials that are used for authentication, authorization and so on. We have also access to scopes that we have access to. So also based on it, this Adobe Exchange system will actually authorize our role and access to our resources. So uh, let's go to IO Management API. So here we can generate the access token that we will use for our applications. We can simply click on the generate access token and use it. So we can just simply include this token into our authorization header that we sent to our apps. However, platforms or um, services that integrate with your apps won't have access to your developer console, of course. This is why we will generate the token using the API instead. So firstly, you will uh, know how to handle it if a custom implementation is needed, but also for us it will be easier because we will create environments and requests in Postman so we can easier test the app builder applications. So to do it, we can click on the view curl command to generate a curl command that we will copy and import to Postman. So let's uh, just do it. Let's open Postman application. And here we have a new workspace that I created. This is like an um, empty workspace. We do not have anything here. So firstly, let's import uh, a new request, right? So I just paste the comment here and Postman will automatically create everything that we need. So uh, let's just import into collection. So it created a new post request. We can change the name of the collection to OAuth. And here we can see the request, right? So we have some credentials here, but actually we can get back to our developer console and let's get back to IO management API. And here we can download environment variables for our server to server. So let's uh, just download it. And now we can import it as well into Postman. So let's open it here and let's go to environment. And here we can see that we have credential in code expect stage. So we have all the credentials that we need here. And right now we can clean it up a little bit. So firstly, uh, we can use IMS environment environment here. So instead of having this, we can simply change it into um, IMS. And we firstly need to, of course, select the environment. So right now we can see that it, it works correctly here. And now grant type will stay the same. This is uh, required, but we can change the client ID into API key, client secret into client secret and scope to scope. Now let's save it, um, this request. We can also name it to uh, get access 
token and right now you don't need to go to developer console uh, for getting the access token we can simply use postman to generate it and then use it for authorization of our request so now let's try it out we have um, this request as you can see here with all the credentials taken from the environment that is called credential on the code expect stage so let's just send a request and we have method not allowed uh, let's see no why is that Oh, okay, uh, I see that I forgot here the HTTPS because the IMS here, it's only the domain name, so it's not including the HTTPS. So let's now send the request and we can see that indeed we've got the access token that we can right now use. All right, in the previous lesson, we disabled authentication in the app config YAML file for the generic action. So right now we will enable it, but uh, let's just remind that here the require Adobe auth uh, with this field we can control whether a specific action needs to be secure and in most cases we want to keep this enabled to control access to our apps actions of course so let's see um, if we enable it we need to rerun the um, like rerun the application to actually apply the new configuration so uh, let's run AO app run and then we can see if it works as expected. So right now it should be running correctly. And to test it, we also need to get the URL of the generic action because we want to test, we want to send a request to a generic action. So how we can get the uh, URL of this runtime action? We can do it by actually running the AIO app get URL command. And this will print us all the uh, URLs of our actions. And as you can see here, we do not have local host URLs. We have the runtime actions URLs, and that's because we run AIO app run command, not IO app dev. So in the next video, I will explain the differences so it will be all uh, perfectly clear for you. So right now that we have the access to those um, generic action and publish events action, let's firstly copy the uh, URL, so the first part of the URL, and let's go to Postman so we can create a new environment. So let's create a new. This will be, uh, sorry, environment here. Let's name it stage. And here we'll be having a URL variable with the URL to our runtime action. So now if we go to collections, let's create a new collection. Let's call it, um, yeah, just simply app builder. And now we can create a new request. Let's make it post. And now let's, okay, let's firstly change the stage environment. So now let's use the URL environment variable that we configured here, right? So this is this. And now if we go, let's change the name to generic and let's get back to our terminal to copy the rest part of this URL and let's paste it here, right? Okay, so now if we send it, actually let's maybe save this request first. Let's send this request and let's see what, what will happen. So we'll have the error, cannot authorize request, reason missing authorization header. So, okay, let's generate this access token again. Uh, we need to again change the environment. Let's send it. I will copy this access token. And now let's go to app builder. And here we can create authorization for the whole folder uh, that we are in. So we can go to authorization select um, a bearer token and let's just paste this token here uh, let's save it and change the environment to stage let's get back here and let's send it uh, but this time yeah we have also a new uh, arrow that we are missing the ems org id header so actually what we can do we can copy the ims organization from here so let's uh, copy this and copy this into stage. So this will be first here and this will be here. Let's save it. Let's get back to our generic. And uh, what we need to do, we need to use add header with this header. And the value will be EMS organization. Let's save it and let's send it.
and we can see that our runtime action was uh, executed because we got hello world that we actually configured in a previous lesson. All right, that wraps up our overview of Adobe's authentication and authorization process in NetBuilder. By now, you should understand how the auth process works and have your Postman collection environments requests ready for the next lessons on working with a builder. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe so you don't miss future content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next lesson.